In this lecture, we're going to study electrolysis. Now, uh, first of all, we need to define what the term electrolysis means. Now, uh, the meaning of electrolysis is that it's uh, it's basically uh, it's the decomposition decomposition of an electrolyte. And we're going to discuss what an electrolyte is. So it's a decomposition of an electrolyte by passing electricity. Now that is the basic definition of what electrolysis is. Now we need to uh, first break down and understand what this uh, definition of electrolysis is, uh, what is the meaning of this definition. Now, what, what do we understand by the term decomposition? Decomposition means uh, the breakdown. It means the breakdown of a compound into its uh, elements. And electrolyte, on the other hand, is a substance that is going to be broken down by passing electricity. Now, uh, we need to uh, define what an electrolyte is. So, an electrolyte is any substance that breaks down when electricity is passed through it. Now, what are those substances? Those substances are acids. Uh, and we have studied acids. Acids are, for example, HCl, H2SO4. You have mineral acids, then you have organic acids. So, all types of acids can act as electrolytes. And bases plus another substance which can act as an electrolyte are salts. So acids, bases and salts are all electrolytes because they, when you pass electricity through it, and another important point about this is uh, that they have to be in aqueous or molten state. So if you pass electricity through them, they're going to get broken down into the elements, into the substances that make them. For example, if you pass electricity through magnesium oxide, magnesium oxide is going to be breaking down into magnesium and oxygen. And the reason why they should be aqueous or molten is that current would only pass through them if the ions are free to move around. So when they're aqueous or molten, their ions can... freely move. But when they are solid, the ions are stuck in position, they cannot move. So in aqua state and molten state, they would act as electrolytes, they would, uh, you would be able to pass electricity through them and they are going to get broken down. Now there are many substances through which electricity can be passed through. Now uh, for example, you have metals. But what happens to metals when you pass electricity through them? It Nothing is going to happen to them. So metals are Metals are not electrolytes. There's another substance which uh, through which electricity can be passed through, and that is graphite. But what happens to graphite? Nothing happens to graphite. So this is not an electrolyte. So electro electrolysis is the process in which if you pass electricity, the compound breaks down. If it doesn't, then that's not electrolysis. Now, the first very first part about electrolysis, the very first topic in electrolysis, the subtopic of electrolysis, and that subtopic is the electrolysis the electrolysis of molten electrolytes. So that is the first topic. It's the electrolysis of molten electrolytes and we will be using inert electrodes uh, since we I haven't given you a description of electrodes but I'll, I'll give you one thing that the term inert means that they would be unreactive so these electrodes will not be uh, they do not take part in electrolysis. They have no role to play in electrolysis. So this is what is meant by an inert electrode. And an electrode is a point 
uh, which is connected to a terminal of the battery that that's uh, uh, and the role of an electrode is to pass current so the the only thing that they do is they are only used they only pass current and that is their only role so that is uh, an inert electrode so I'll, uh, the first thing is i'm going to draw a diagram of an electro electrolysis that is happening uh, an important thing is you have to pass current through it so there's going to be a battery and a battery is represented by this symbol so this symbol represents a battery and the next thing you have is uh, you'll have you'll have uh, electrodes let's say this is the shape of one of the electrodes you'll have electrodes attached to this battery so that's one electrode and there would be another electrode attached to the other end of a battery and if you look at the symbol of the battery this one is the negative terminal this side is the negative terminal and this side is the positive terminal what that means is that the negative terminal uh, transmits electrons so electrons flow from the negative terminal and they flow to this electrode whereas electro uh, the positive terminal pulls electrons it is consuming electrons so the electrons are going to travel away from the from this terminal so so battery is going to consume electrons from this end it's going to produce electrons from the other end now uh, the first electrolysis I'm going to do is that of uh, it's a simple electrolysis I have an electrolyte I'm going to dip these two electrodes into a beaker and that beaker it contains it contains mg magnesium oxide molten so molten magnesium oxide so the state of that is going to be liquid so i have molten magnesium oxide in the container now when a substance is molten its ions are free to move around it's this is a this is a, a base it's a base so it can act as an electrolyte all oxides metal oxides and metal hydroxides are bases so this is a base and I've already told you that electrolytes are bases, acids and salts. So this is an electrolyte. And since it is molten, its ions are free to move around. And uh, you'll have the solution would consist of Mg plus 2 ions and O minus 2 ions and they're freely moving around in this solution. Now, it, the battery is providing electrons from this end. So electrons are coming over here and they are all getting accumulated over here because they don't have any other place to go. So this becomes the negatively charged terminal. This side is the negative side. It becomes negatively charged. This side is called the cathode. So the electrode that is over here, this one, it, the name given to this electrode is called the, it's called the cathode on the other hand electrons are being consumed from the other end so there is a lack of electrons on this side this becomes the this becomes the positive terminal of uh, our electrolysis and this electrode is called the anode now so the name given to this electrode is the anode so you have cathode over here and you have anode over here uh, now the next thing we already know one thing that opposite charges opposite charges attract each other now opposite charges are going to attract each other so the so the cathode which is our negative electrode so the cathode is going to attract the positive ion which is mg plus so it's freely moving around but it's going to get attracted to the negative terminal so so this attracts mg plus two ions on the other hand the anode which is our positive electrode 
Now the positive electrode, this is the positive terminal, it will have a positive charge on it. It's going to attract the negative of negative ion. So positive would attract the negative ion. So O minus 2 is going to get attracted. to the anode so cathode attracts mg plus 2 anode attracts o minus 2 now when mg plus 2 gets over here what happens to it it has now the battery is providing electrons to it what happens is that electrons are going to jump and are going to be given to mg plus 2 because the battery is trying to provide electrons to it on the other hand the positive side, the electrons are being consumed by the battery. So electrons, O minus 2 has two extra electrons. So electrons are going to be taken away from O minus 2 and they're going to be given to the battery. So we're going to get two equations. If I write the equation over here, Mg plus 2, which already has less electrons, it has two electrons. Plus 2 means that it has already lost two electrons and the battery is providing it electrons. So Mg plus 2 goes over there, gets attracted over there. And since the battery is providing electrons to it, it's able to gain two electrons and it's going to form mg metal so this is the equation at cathode what happens at the other end o minus 2 goes over there and the battery is pulling electrons from it so it loses two electrons so o minus 2 since it has two extra electrons it's going to lose two electrons and it forms a normal oxygen atom now there's one other problem Oxygen would never exist as an oxygen atom. Oxygen is a diatomic molecule. And remember one thing, uh, if we devise, what are diatomic, diatomic molecules? They are all group 7. Elements are diatomic. Cl would always exist as Cl2. Bromine will always exist as Br2. Uh, iodine will, will always exist as I2. Then you have three other elements which are diatomic. One is hydrogen, H2. The other is uh, nitrogen, N2. And then there's oxygen, which is O2. So since oxygen, there should be, it should be O2. The, so there should be two O ions. And one lost two electrons. So two would end up losing four electrons. So th this is the equation that you will get at anode. Now let's do another electrolysis of a molten electrolyte and we can come up with another uh, and one uh, this time I'm doing the electrolysis of uh, molten NaCl. So we're going to do the electrolysis of uh, molten NaCl and again we're going to use uh, inert electrodes now uh, in my previous example I did not discuss uh, what substances actually make inert electrodes so remember one thing that inert electrodes are made from they are made from graphite which and you can also write graphite is a form of carbon so you can write carbon as well and there's another one, it's graphite or it's made from platinum. So these two substances make up inert electrodes. Now moving to the electrolysis of NaCl molten, I'll have a battery. So this is a battery. This is one terminal, that's the other terminal. This side is the negative terminal of the battery. This side is the positive terminal of the battery. And you have, uh, and these are attached to electrodes. So that's one electrode, and this side is the cathode. So battery is actually, it is actually providing electrons to this terminal, and the other side The other electrode is the positive one. The battery is trying to extract electrons from that side. So this side is the negative side. So let's put the negative sign all over this electrode. And this side is the 
positive side this is the positive electrode and i already told you what the name of the positive and negative terminals are this is called the cathode so this end this electrode would be called the cathode whereas this electrode would be called anode and this entire thing is dipped into a solution of uh, so there's a solution over here, not a solution, it's molten NaCl. So there's a there's liquid NaCl. So we have NaCl molten. And when you have NaCl molten, the ions are free to move around. So Na plus 1 is going to get attracted to this negative electrode, the cathode, whereas Cl minus 1 is going to get attracted to the positive, uh, this positive anode. Now, let's write this down. Let's... Uh, first complete the equations for cathode what happens at cathode now if you look at cathode the ca cathode is going to attract Na plus 1 cathode is the negative one the negative electrode so it's going to attract the positive ion so it attracts Na plus 1 and when it attracts Na plus 1, this side of the battery is giving electrons. So Na plus 1 is going to get electron on this side because the battery is providing electrons and Na plus 1 is, has a deficiency of 1 electron. Plus 1 means that it has lost 1 electron. So the battery is going to give that electron to it. And this side is going to form Na. Similarly, what happens at anode is Now what happens at anode, which is the positive terminal, is uh, it attracts Cl minus one, which is the negative ion. The positive is going to attract the negative ion. So when it attracts Cl minus one, the battery is pulling electrons from it. So Cl minus one is bound to lose an electron. So it loses one electron, and it's going to form Cl. Now I just discussed this with you that Cl is a diatomic element. So Cl would never exist as Cl. It's going to exist as Cl2. So there should be two Cl-1 ions. And since one Cl-1 loses one electrons, two Cl-1 are going to lose. They're going to lose two electrons instead. So that's your equation at anode. Now, when you're doing electrolysis, there's one other thing that you're asked to do, and that is that you're asked to write the overall equation for the reaction. So you're asked to do one thing, you're asked to write the overall equation. And the way overall equations are written is that you sum up the two equations at cathode and anode, but you don't just sum them up. Uh, let me write the equation at cathode. It's Na plus 1 plus 1 electron and that's giving me Na. And the equation at cathode is, let me underline this, this is the equation at cathode and this is the equation at anode. So the equation at anode is 2Cl minus 1 and it's minus 2 electron and that's giving me Cl2. Now there's one minor problem that uh, when you write the overall equation of this entire reaction you the first thing that you do is you balance the number of electrons gain and lost so chlorine is losing two electrons whereas n is gaining just one electron so you multiply the first equation by two if i multiply the entire equation by two i'll get two na plus one i'll get two electrons and there'll be two na now the electrons lost and gain are equal and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to sum these two equations up. I'm going to add the left hand side and the right hand sides up. So I'll get 2Na plus 1 plus 2Cl minus 1 plus 2 electrons and minus 2 electrons get cancelled out. Then you have on the right hand side you're going to get 2Na plus Cl2. So this is the overall equation for my reaction that was happening above.